Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review. Today I'm going to talk about one of the newly elucidated mechanisms of muscle growth. You know, this, there's been so many over the years as to why muscles grow and how they get bigger and what makes the, you know, them, them do this. Is it, is it the, the, the old theory was that it was micro damage to the, uh, the fibers, uh, the muscle fibers, uh, micro damage that's being done by heavy sustained movements. And that was just assumed that it gave off some kind of signal and then that would cause the rebuilding of muscle tissue. Um, you know, I read an article someone sent me recently and it was really good. It took me a long time to read this article because it was very technical and very detailed. And it, and it details, you know, in, in muscles, okay, if we have a muscle fiber, say, um, if we have a piece of paper here that's a muscle fiber, um, there are, you know, strands of muscle, long muscle cells that make up this unit of muscle tissue, okay, I guess you could call it. And what most of us know as the muscle fibers that contract, okay, are what we call the actin and myosin filaments. Those actin and myosin filaments, you know, contract and they make the muscle, you know, obviously pull away together. If you're flexing your bicep, those actin and myosin come together and, and they lock and, and, and then that's the mechanism by which the cells are able to generate force. When you break down these, you know, th theoretically and build them bigger, okay, you can generate more force. And, that, and that's pretty much accepted. Those are the contractile uh, filaments of the muscle cells. However, they found that there's, there, along the M line of, uh, if you put up, the, if Tyler can put up a picture of a muscle filament, uh, there's something called the M line that kind of runs down the middle of the muscle fiber. And in that M line, you can see right in the middle there, okay, you have something called a uh, titan. T-I-T-N, not titan, titan. And titan is, a, is a, also a, a filament. And there was an article that came out recently, and it was called Why Exercise Builds Muscle, Titan Mechanosensing Control of Skeletal Muscle Growth Under Load. And that was in the Biophysical Journal. I feel like Steve Blackman saying that. But that, th this was a legitimate you know, a researcher article that was out there. And they showed that this titan molecule, okay, or titan kinase, okay, molecule that runs, that is found in this M band. When this molecule is stretched and opened up, okay, and what is going to take it, what, what kind of force is it going to take to open this thing up or stretch the thing? They found that a 70% max effort. So if you can lift, you know, if your max bench press is, is 100 pounds, you want to lift at least 70 pounds. And if you do that, you will stretch open this titan uh, molecule, this kinase molecule. And then all the ATP that's, that's in the muscle cell there uh, will what we call phosphorylate. So basically ATP is, is a adenosine molecule with three phosphate groups on it. We know that's the fuel source that, that, that muscles use. And if one of those phosphates gets put onto another molecule, that's called phosphorylation. Um, and when you phosphorylate this titan kinase domain along this M line, after it gets stretched open by some kind, uh, at least a 70% max effort, you, it stays open. And when it stays open, it sends out signals, okay? And these signals, what they do is they tell the ribosomes inside your muscle cells, and ribosomes are areas that are, that where protein synthesis occurs. So imagine these the little uh, factories inside your cells and they rebuild muscle tissue, okay? And they, they, they produce new muscle via the production of new proteins and polypeptides. When titan is stretched, okay, by this phosphoryl, and it gets phosphorylated, okay, with the ATP, and obviously the more ATP in the muscle cell, the, the more you can phosphorylate it. Creatine, obviously, we know helps elevate uh, ATP levels inside the cells. That would help as well, and that might be one of the mechanisms that creatine causes growth. When this domain is phosphorylated, it tells the ribosomes to start to reproduce themselves. Now, this could take a couple of days to happen. The ribosomes just don't automatically start, you know, reproducing. So that's why there's a delayed effect from, you know, actually exercising and damaging the fibers to rebuilding because you have to then reproduce these ribosomes. This is now a very interesting mechanism, and they, and they show a direct correlation between this, and they could reproduce this in a lab. And, it, and it's, to me, it, it, it's fascinating because... I never knew that this mechanism existed. So stretch under load, very important, 70% max effort. Open up this 
Titan kinase domain that's found inside the cells that has nothing to do with actin myosin. So damaging those muscle fibers, nothing. It's opening up this domain, then phosphorylating it with ATP, in other words, adding a phosphate group, turning it on, and then causing the cells to start to produce more ribosomes so they can engage in, in more protein synthesis and build muscle tissue. Keeping this, if you re work out on a regular basis, this Titan kinase domain remains open for long periods of time. And that is why when you don't train for an extended period of time, but you had been training you know, very frequently, uh, you don't lose muscle so fast because that domain is still open and your body is still trying to build muscle despite the fact that you're not actually putting any kind of load on that muscle. Um, so there's a lot to this article. If you, you can go check it out itself. Like I said, I'll read the name of it again. It's the, it's, it appeared in the Biophysical Journal. It's called Why Exercise Builds Muscle, Titan Mechanosensing Control of Skeletal Muscle Growth Under Load. Terrific article. If you have time and you have the expertise, it's very complicated. There's a, but it, it, if, you, if, you like to, if you like to geek out on this kind of stuff, I think you'll find it really, really interesting. I did. And literally, you know, I have no time in the day to do anything, and I actually spent an entire hour and a half just mapping out what they were trying to say and th how they did it and, and what the mechanism was because it was complicated to me because I just had never learned this. And when I went to school, that wasn't the way we learned. And this is very, very new stuff. So interesting. How muscles grow. Titan, that is what we want to uh, target in the cells. As we know, when you subject the muscles to heavy weights, that forces open you know, the cells, causes a stretch response on the cells. That's why the eccentric portion is very important too. Because when you're lowering the weight under load, you, you create a tremendous stretch on that cell. Um, but it has to be heavy weights. That's why high repetition light weights don't really build muscle, except in genetic freaks, of course. But for most of us, that won't happen because you're not opening up that, you're not stretching that titan molecule and then you're not phosphorylating it because there's no reason to because you're not reaching that 70% max, um, I guess you could say goal weight on the muscle. And for every person it's different, don't forget. My 70% is not gonna be what Tyler's 70% is, which is not gonna be what Ronnie Coleman's 70% is. So you gotta know what your max 70% is. Obviously full range motion, good control of the weight, get that stretch phosphorylate that titan, produce more ribosomes, and make more muscle. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle Supplement and Science Review.